Hey guys, it's Martin Wright in Itty Bit. We're back again. And today we're gonna talk about that long awaited video about altering muzzles and uh, what we can do to shape them and fit them so that they're really comfortable on our dogs, all right? So that's what today is about. Okay guys, so we're gonna be sizing a muzzle for my little dog, Izzy Bit. Itty Bit, Izzy Bit, who's Izzy Bit? Itty Bit right um so we're going to be sizing her muzzle and um we're going to be um altering it so that way it fits her comfortably um before i showed you guys this this is the altered her altered muzzle um that i have for her now right um a lot's been done to this let's see what a fresh one out of the box looks like these days so slide the box open here i pull out oh what's this they have a card with some information on it. I'm not gonna read that. I kind of know how to use a muzzle already, as most people do um, to some extent. I'll just throw that over there and this over there. And um, so this is the muzzle itself. I already could tell some differences between the muzzle that I have and this muzzle that's here. Um, the muzzle I have is actually an older muzzle. You could tell it has the metal buckle collar, has the metal buckle, which I really like. Um, this muzzle does not have the metal buckle. They have the quick, easy releases of these metal, these plastic clips that will just clip in, which could be really easy to get it on the dog. Um, another thing I don't really love about this muzzle that I have here is that it has this tied onto the front. And with the dog, like I'm about to try it on itty bit right now, but I could see how that could get in the way. Some dogs do need a third strap, um, and that's what that is. But itty bit does not need a third strap because she's not trying to get the muzzle off. Um, so I'm gonna see if I could get that third strap out of there. Um, and that's this strap here um, when I'm altering it for her. All right, um, this is a lot of stuff. It's just big and bulky. Um, so we'll see what we do, all right? So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this thing on Itty Bit here. Itty Bit, I know she's a very small girl, so I'm gonna try to size it down as small as I can as I'm doing this. It's gonna take a little minute. Maybe Frank will fast forward all this. I don't know. Maybe he'll just make you suffer and watch it. But if he does make you suffer and watch it, you could definitely complain in our comments. All right, here we go. Maybe that will work. Eh, it's still too big. This is a size one. Maybe I can't use Baskerville anymore if they're gonna be like, for tiny dogs, for big dogs I probably can, but for tiny dogs, I don't know if I can because her neck is a lot smaller than that. I could tell just by looking at it, like that's a big hole. But let's see what happens. Okay, so I take some treats here and I put them in my hand. I'm gonna put those right inside the muzzle. I'm gonna call her over. She'll stick her head in. As she does, I'm gonna feed around and clip it on. Now, as I was worried about is um, this, once I clip this in here, there is a lot of slack under here for the muzzle. I'm not sure if there's anything I could do about that, um, which is a problem because that means the muzzle is pretty loose. Um, there's a lot of slack there. Another thing is that the muzzle's riding up into her eyes. That's gonna be something I can alter um, this clip, you see how big that is on her face? That, um, that center clip, I don't like that so much. So I'm gonna try to get that off too. Um, and I'm gonna try my best to see if there's anything else I can do to size this down. It looks like this Baskerville tag is on it. Um, maybe I could cut that tag off. And if I could cut that Baskerville tag off, then I could slide more and make it even smaller. So I'm gonna uh, go to work on this thing a little bit. Good girl, itty bit. You can see right there when I pulled it off, I did not actually unclip it. So it's so big, oh, this clip, what is going on here? It is so big 
that, oh, they have a safety on, on the clip itself. That's pretty cool. But it's so big that I could slide it on and off. What I was saying before is these um, little, uh, this tag is, is sewn on. So if I cut this thread, I might be able to get this tag off, which could help me to shrink or shorten the whole, um, this whole section. So I'm gonna go to work on that right now and see if I could do anything about it. Okay, so I'm trying to get this thing off. This is annoying. Um, like Baskerville, I understand that you need to advertise and that you need to, um, you know, make, put your name on the product, but I want you to do another way. I don't want it to be there. Um, and as soon as you guys start listening to me, you'll be much better off. So, um, all right, so here we go. So finally I have that nicely exposed. What I'm gonna try to do, I'm gonna take a quick look at this and see what the best way to proceed is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reach in here, grab my trusty um, Leatherman. Leatherman, if you're out there and if you want to, a sponsor, I love your tools, so I will definitely do that. And I'm gonna try to, without cutting off my finger, just remove this tab here. Itty bits watching me like human. What do you do? So that way you can. Oh, I got one end didn't come off. I have to get this. This is annoying. I keep my Leatherman pretty sharp, so I'm trying. I'm afraid of it actually. I don't want to cut my finger off. That would be fun for a YouTube channel. Just bleeding Martin. We'll keep that in the outtakes. Right, Frank? Right, Martin. Frank, that's how Frank sounds. Sounds just like me. So that's probably as good as I'm gonna get it. Um, I could take a lighter. Maybe I will when I'm done um, altering. I probably will take a lighter and just burn that off. But now that I did that, we'll see if I can make this thing even smaller. And through there. Right, that's as small as it will be. Now we're getting down to itty bit size here. All right, still got this thing. And that's a plastic thing too, that's annoying. Um, I'm gonna take that completely off. Um, there are ways that you could alter this. I don't know, I don't like to strap at all. So I'm gonna get rid of that since I'm altering anyway. This goes. I don't like that strap. There's a better way that they could have done that. Um, very disappointed. Not that disappointed, I don't care that much, but that goes away. Now I have to figure out how to get this off. And there's a couple little problems. One is that they double stitch that, so I'd have to untake that stitch to get this all the way out. Just try to open that up. Excellent. Now it's opened up nicely. And I should be able to, with it open, slide this right through, pull it right out. Excellent. All right. So my goal is to get this thing off, right? These things are notoriously tricky. So you have to have a pretty good memory when you're taking them apart because putting them back together can be tricky. So I have to remember it goes in that way and then up and around. I come, before I do anything, I have to make remember to put this back on. So that's first. All right. And then I need to pull this off because just don't need it. It's extra stuff. I don't need it for my dog. If your dog is really trying to get the muzzle off, then you really need to check back on those old videos that, that um, I made about keeping the dog, you know, teaching the dog the muzzle. The dog should not fight against your muzzle. You know, so they should not need those third and fourth straps. If you have a brand new dog or a dog that um, hasn't been conditioned, but you still need to use a muzzle as um, a safety, then in those cases, then maybe you will need that third strap. You know, if they're, but it's just a pain. In those cases, comfort is not the most important thing, I don't think. Eh, I don't know if I got that right. Maybe I did. So I go here, slide it all the way down, and I'm going to feed this 
and through here. Want to be pretty small and through there. Oh, good. There we go. Oh, look at that. Now we're looking at the thing here. This is starting to look like some. All right, so now that I have um, that, let's see how, how it fits her. See if this is any better already. I'm gonna go in here, grab my treats again. Let's go. Let's go, sweetie. Excellent, it is in. I'll just drop that one for now. Clip this on and look. Now that's a nice sturdy fit. Excellent. So we see a couple of things. One is that her nose is bouncing on the end, kind of. And this is in her eyes. Poor thing. Look, that's what her face looks like. This is pretty much in her eyes. I don't like that. Um, the, at the edge, she could kind of rub her muzzle on, on the plastic in the guard piece in front. She also has this little tri piece here, which makes it a smaller area for me to be able to um, put my treats in, right? But it has a secure fit. It won't come off easily. Um, this clip, I actually kind of kind of like that clip for a couple of reasons. Um, one is that it has a lock, so I could lock it. I just learned about that just now. The other one is because it is quick and easy to put on. And for a dog like Itty Bit, who is not um, really a big problem, like if a dog is fighting and you don't lock this and they're scratching at it, it could easily come apart. You know, but for a dog like Itty Bit, who's not going to fight it anyway, um, that is very convenient versus the buckle clip. So depends on where your dog is. This is way too long. I don't want that hanging down on my dog. So that's going to be one thing we take off. All right. So here we go. Next thing we have to do is we have to actually go to the kitchen to start to alter this a little bit. But before I do that, because I know what I'm going to do with this muzzle, I'm going to just take off... Um, this cross piece here. Ah, oh, look at that. This will work nicely to be able to get this out. So once again, I'm just gonna go to work here and saw a little bit, get through this. Shouldn't take too long, cause it is plastic. There. Now there's some edges here. Maybe I could get a little bit off with this serrated knife. Once again, if you're using tools like this, you should definitely put on your goggles. I'm sorry that I don't have mine on because um, you need safety. Probably need a hard hat too. You wanna make sure that you don't go so far that you actually weaken um, the material, you know? Yeah, that's pretty good. Still not as smooth as I'd want it to be. So I um, I think this Leatherman also has a nice little file on it. Um, and that's what I'm gonna use now to just file down some of these little nubs a bit. I might go to the Dremel because I don't have the patience or the time for this. So I'm gonna go grab my Dremel, um, be right back. Okay, back again. I got my diamond bit Dremel. Um, and I'm gonna turn that on. And I'm just gonna buzz a little around here. Just make it nice and smooth. A little smooth up there. See this little divot thing here? I'm gonna just take that off too while I'm here. Excellent. You don't want to go too much, and you could easily go too much and weaken the material on um, this way. That's what that looks like. All right, so that's what it looks like now. Pretty good. Okay, so we're in the dog kitchen now, and um, I already have my muzzle inside this boil boiled water. I'm boiling some more because I want to cover the whole muzzle. But it's in there and it's getting loosened up a bit, cooking up a little bit. Um, so in a second, I'm going to put more 
water in here. But that's the process. You gotta, you gotta heat the actual plastic itself because when you heat the plastic, as you guys all know, you could kind of bend it. You don't want to heat it too much because then it will be useless. The water is now finely boiled. So I'm gonna take this and simply pour it right on top without splashing it on myself. And I'm trying my best to cover up the whole muzzle with water if I can. Eh, I'm not gonna bother to boil more water just to cover that little bit. So I just let that sit there, poke at it a little bit. Um, I got these uh, muzzle crafting tools. Um, they're $75 each. Here's one right here. And with that, I could use it to lift my muzzle out, flip it over. So if you would like to get one of those, just um, put it in the, in the comments below after you subscribe to the channel. And um, we will send you out. As a matter of fact, if you subscribe to the channel and you put it in the comments below and you send us, our e send us an email with your address, I will have Frank send you out one of these free of charge. They're normally $75. That's how much they are. Now, I think it's warm enough, but we're going to see in a minute, right? So I got to get this thing out of here. Oop, there it is. A couple little shakes. So I'm here. Got my Leatherman. Both of them. Ooh, this thing is warm. So I want to get one on there and one on here. And I want to just clamp down so that way I'm pinching that whole thing in. And I'm just going to hold that and let it cool a little bit, just like that. Pinch here too, and just let it try to cool down a bit. Sometimes you could use actually water. I could turn on the water now, and that will cool it quicker and harden it quicker. But I'm not ready for that yet. All right, I'm gonna take that off. I could already see that I have buckled that in a little bit. I also wanna, like, as I do, I wanna get it off, get it elongated and getting shortened at the same time. All right, so I wanna shorten here too. And go back in. That might be enough. I wanna shorten right there. See, so I want that to buckle in a little bit. That's gonna get it out of her eyes. I'm actually gonna cool it down a bit. So I'm gonna turn on some cold water. Could always reheat it if I don't like it. And I'm just gonna use my cold water and cool it in the position that I want it to be. Excellent. That's pretty good. And I also want this to be just a little bit more pointy here. So that way it's right off of her nose. Excellent. I think that's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um, as I said before, this strap is a bit long. So I have my trusty scissors here. Um, I'm going to guess. If I guess wrong, it'll be too short. But I already sized it for her. Um, I just want to take off just a little bit. I'll probably take off about that much because I know it will kind of fit anyway. So snip, there you go. All right, so this is pretty much done. I got it nice and pointy there at the top to be away from her nose. I got it curled a little bit and buckled here so that way um, it's not gonna hopefully not be in her eyes. Um, yeah, I clipped off my little thing. I just need to make it a little bit more comfortable for her. Um, dry it up and then we'll test it. All right. So we're moving back to the other room. Okay, just as comparison here, I got another Baskerville muzzle. This one I will not alter. This will just be for anybody who comes to me with like a little chihuahua or min pin that needs a muzzle. You can see here, this one is a lot rounder at the top. Um, it's a lot less pointy. This one is buckled a bit here on these uh, supports. Of course, the third strap is now gone. We also took out that cross piece because my dog is not gonna reach through there to be able to bite anybody, especially when this thing is positioned on correctly. 
Um, so we took that out. This is how it looks kind of right now, right? We have the long straps and all that going on with this one. So I don't know what dog they made this for because this dog has a huge neck, but a really small snout. Um, so whatever, <laughs> I don't know. I'm trying to picture the breed or the mixed breed that would have a neck that size and a pointy enough snout to need one of these muzzles. I can't think of it. Anyway, so this, I'll just put it here for now. So here we are. Um, it's pretty much all dried up. It's pretty much all cool. You know, um, this one looks like that. You can see they're kind of starting to look the same here. I made this one a little bit pointier and a little bit narrower and more narrow in some certain spots. Um, as you can see, the one that I have for Itty Bit has this nice foam. You could get this stuff from like a hobby shop. Um, you want to make sure it's clean. Um, I just boiled this, so I know it's pretty clean. Um, maybe I could put alcohol on it, but I'm going to take this little piece of foam here if I really want to clean it up, and I'm going to just stick it in. That's just to make it a little bit more comfortable for my dog because I like her a lot. All right, so that goes right in there. And I'm just going to hold that in place to the best of my ability, and it will stick on. If anything, um, if it starts coming off, I'll just grab some crazy glue or some Gorilla Glue, and I will just, um, and I will just, yeah, just glue it back on with stronger glue. Um, if I needed my third strap, I would just hold or put something underneath it and just use an X-Acto knife in order to cut that little piece out or I'll just measure it and cut it um, before I put it on, right? But for now, this will work. Okay, so that's just about ready. Just about ready to go. Um, and for her to put it on again, see how it fits. Okay, here we go. Click. Excellent. It's still up on her eyes just a little bit. So I probably, like before I use this, I'll probably reheat it and really push down more, shorten here a little bit more. Or maybe I might shorten in here a little bit to get it down and out of her eyes um, just a little more if I can. Yeah, I think I will do that. All right, so going back to the kitchen. Here we go. Ready? Handstand. Handstand. Ah, oh, sweetie. Ready? Hands. Come on, let's do it. Handstand. Yes, yes, yes. Good job. Almost done. You want to do it? Oh, look at you spinning, huh? Ready? Handstand. Yes. Yes, that's fun. Excellent. All right. Okay, Frank. That's boiling water. Water's boiling. We're ready to do this thing. So, um, what I'm, my attempt, what I'm going to go for here is I am going to, whoop, shut off. Okay, that's spitting. Good. I'm going to, um, my goal is to move this end forward. So I'm going to be trying to push forward like this. I don't really want to lift this end up. I'm going to heat it so it's upside down, right? Um, so that way the, the end that I'm working on is going to be the most hot end, right? I gotta hold that as I'm holding it. Maybe I can get that to buckle a little. Maybe the other side, I could get it to buckle a little to cool this whole thing down. But it didn't even bounce back when I let go. That's a pretty good sign. Okay, I think that's gonna be as good as it's gonna be right now. Let's see how it looks on itty bit. We're back with our muzzle. Um, I just came back from our second attempt in the kitchen. I'm um, putting this thing together. I'm not going to put my uh, comfort piece on here because I want to see how this looks for her. At this time, I'm just going to clip it right on because she doesn't care too much about her muzzle being on. And I'm going to clip here in the back, get her hair out of the way, and a quick little... Why does it feel like it doesn't fit? Oh, there it is. A little clip in. Pop head up now. Excellent. So there's a couple other things I can do. I don't need this little bottom tab, and I could use that to um, help her. But if you look at her face now, you can see that um, the muzzle is not actually in her eye. It's right next to it, and it's probably still a little uncomfortable. 
um, but it's not inside of her eye, which is um, what the main purpose of that is. Now, I'm gonna um, go ahead and put my little comfort strip across and that will help out a bit. I'm also gonna try to size this just a little bit looser for her because once again, she's not a dog that's fighting against it. So it can be a little bit looser and that will also help my straps to ease out just a little bit, a little looser. Ah, there you go, puppy. So she doesn't mind it that much at all, right? Itty bit, let me take a look at you. Yeah, I'm happy with how that fits, right? Not in her eye. She can't bite me, but she could take food easily from me. All right, so last thing I'm gonna do now is just put on her comfort strips. I'm not gonna use the one I used before, although I can. Um, chances are with the cheap glue that they use on this, eventually I'll have to re-glue it with real glue, with some serious glue. Um, but for now, just jump in here. Kind of just tuck that in. I wanna get the top in first, that's most important. And then let it settle around the sides. All right, so now that little foam is gonna make it a little bit more comfortable. Itty bit, you ready girl? So that goes there. Itty bit's like, yeah, I wanna go over here. Let's go, sweetie. Itty bit, let's go. Let's go, sweets. Took you forever this time. Excellent. Up you go. Good girl. Here's her muzzle, her new one, right in. Clipped in with her comfort strap. Out of her eyes. Yes, that is a good fit. So, yeah, this will probably be the muzzle I use with her more because um, I probably will do a little bit more work with it as well because I want to just bring it in and make it just as comfortable as I can for her. But um, I like to actually, I actually like the clip on the back for my dog. If I'm working with a seriously aggressive dog, I would have to think about that. I do like the lock feature. I think that will hold it in position if the dog tries to pull at it. Um, I don't like, I do not like how big this is, this nub here. Can you imagine that nub being right here on her head? Um, I, don't, I don't really like that at all. Um, I don't like how big this is either, right? That's too big for a little tiny dog like Itty Bit. This thing just, just makes it so it's hard for the collar to be useful or the muzzle to be useful for a dog this small, right? That just makes it hard to be useful at all. So I don't really like that. They could have put it anywhere. They could have put it here. They could have put it under here. You know, they could put it on this strap, you know? This strap could also be cut. If I don't, so this is good if you have a dog, once again, that's really trying to get the muzzle off, you'd put your regular collar through there. Um, and then clip it around the dog's neck down here. But um, with Itty Bit, I could actually cut that off too, get rid of that extra material, because she doesn't need it, right? So um, yeah, I like the muzzle. I like the Baskerville muzzle. Um, it's a good tool, but it's better when you alter it, all right? So this is how my dog looks with her muzzle on. <laughs> okay, if you like what you see here today, then definitely hit the subscribe uh, button and the subscribe bell so that way you know you get notifications when we make new videos I would really love to post videos of you working your dog with the muzzle and of you Making the muzzle fit your dog the way that you want it to fit your dog So if you have any video of that, let me know in the comments below I'll reach out I'll try to get your email and then we can work out some way to transfer it over and I will definitely give you tons of credit and lots of love in one of our upcoming videos. For the time being, enjoy your day and enjoy your dog. Here we go, let's go. Ready, handstand. Yes. Ah, little one, very little girl. Ready? Get a bit ready. Handstand. Let's go, let's go, let's go. 
Good girl. That was really good.